Mm -hmm. All right, good. Do it. It's done. We're doing. We're going. Yeah, we're going. Oh, thanks for the. Yeah. I told you. Yeah, I did. You're, you haven't done a lot of this, have you? We're actually filming. We'll, we'll, we'll be filming. done in a sec. Hang on, hey baby. guys. Uh, over in California, and we're doing. Oh, it went bad again. Uh, oh no, no, there it is. We're doing. Uh, Ryan and I are working on a project. I'm doing the layout on this sign, I, which is actually kind of a weird deal. And I want to show you some things that I've learned about laying out vertical signs that may help you. Um, this is what his customer wants him to make. It's actually a bocce ball uh, scoreboard, I think, something like that. So you can see it's got a series of 15 numbers. And then we're actually, um, Ryan's going to personalize it at the top. Can you get that? Mm -hmm. You got yeah. that? Okay, well then we can let that die. Then. So um, we personalized it at the top, saying Daniel's bocce. And then we've got uh, my wallet. My wife wants my wallet. Mom needs what wallet. is up with wallet. that? It's in the truck, actually. Okay. Gee, I'm not scared at all. Yeah. Uh, okay. We'll move on here. All right, so we better make some more signs. Um, so here's what I did. Now, I in the past, there's been a lot of times where when I first started doing some vertical stuff, it would really make me nervous about spacing and all that. Fortunately, what we did was we left this thing full size and left us some extra room so we can cut it wherever we need to cut it. So what I did, uh, I left my tape over there. What I did was I just kind of threw the numbers on there, 15 lines, and I just used a little one inch eye as spacing because it seemed about right. Then what I did, hang on, I gotta go get the tape measure. Sorry for my garage. What happened to the tape measure? Yeah. What? All right, so what I did was after I did that, I realized this was about two and a half inches. So after I did this and I realized that was about right all the way down, then I moved them out of the way and I just two and a half inches per line and made my lines. Then I know my spacing is right. And again, we're gonna get to the end. Now, this is gonna be a little kind of a where the pegs are held and a, and a red and a green like it had on that. And then we're gonna cut it off here. So then once, now on, on the single digits, I just kind of centered them up to a center line. That's a center line going up and down. And then here, I just realized that uh, at about two and a quarter, uh, two and three eighths was about right. And then I will just, now we're a little short on ones, so we'll have to move those. But um, I realized that that would be about the right spacing there. Another tip that you might think of is looking at it this way, um, sideways to it, makes it a little bit tough to see if everything is straight. So what you might do is work it on the end of a, a table or a bench to where now you can see if everything is squared up a little bit easier than standing sideways to it. So um, that is kind of about it. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put that on my pants. I'm not in my normal garb. Hang on just a second. Yeah, we're really all over the place now. Yeah, we are. They get to see my whole nasty garage. All right. So we're just going to spray these. These are Clarendon letters. Clarendon numbers, that is. That's got a little bit more in it. Sprays a little bit better, I think. We're using, uh, what is this, one by eight? Uh, cedar fencing, right? Yeah. Now see, that's where it's really cool. Over here in California where Ryan is, he can get this one by eight cedar fencing. I can't get that over in Arizona. See the way that flew on me? Yep. Got it. Have it's a... funny, the, the one by eight, um, we have one by six too, but for some reason the grain in the one by eight is so much nicer to carve. So I don't even buy the one by six anymore. Really? If I, yeah, if I get the, if, if I, to cut down to my six inch signs, 
I actually buy the one by eight and rip it down. And it's cheap enough that it's not a... Yeah, it's only about a dollar issue. per board difference, and it really... It, it's worth it to you oh, to it, have nicer material. There. It carves so much better. It's unbelievable. So it's almost like it's a different brand of cedar, a it, different type or something? It sure carves like it. That's weird. And it doesn't warp like the six inch does either. Interesting. Hmm. Well, there's a tip for you guys. If you have that available, I don't have that option. Now, how wide can you get this fencing? That's as wide as it gets. It doesn't not, go to 10 or no, 12. Not unless you go to redwood or whiteboard. Okay, gotcha. So now we have basically our numbers set up. Now, we obviously have to drill our holes. We got to make our things down here. But from a vertical uh, standpoint, that is a way that uh, has ha I've learned kind of over the years those kind of tips in order to um, figure out your spacing. I used to get all freaked out about vertical signs, but um, and it would have been harder honestly if we were locked into a, a specific board that was already cut to size. But we cut this long just on purpose so we could have a little extra to play with, and then cut it after you got your layout done. So we'll now cut that. Uh, cut that off and we know everything is spaced correctly. Anyway guys, um, we'll move on to another section and uh, we'll get to carving this thing. Okay, so it is uh, early the next morning. Ryan got this thing all carved, and normally uh, I don't, I don't like white inset letters or numbers in this case. But uh, the thing is, Ryan found. Uh, Ryan, can you grab that can? Yeah. Ryan found, um, and you guys, many of you guys know this. Ryan found some uh, some of the Rust-Oleum primer that's white, and actually. Uh, white normally doesn't work real well covering wood color, but we think this is going to come out pretty good. So this is the white um, Rust-Oleum primer. Now he coated it three three coats. Yeah, three three coats with the white primer, and uh, it looks pretty good. So um, we're getting ready to sand it off. Now these these are holes are for. Uh, it turns out that the um, a golf tee is the the perfect size for those uh, little scoring pegs. And then um, we're gonna do something different here for the red and the green. Uh, but anyway, so Ryan's getting ready to sand this thing off. We'll see what, it, uh, what it's gonna look like.
this. So. There you go. All right, uh, here we go with the reveal. Good, son. I like it. That's gonna look great. Yeah. When you put that finish on it, that cedar grain will pop. That's really gonna look nice. Let me blow it this way because I can see some of the black. All right, we'll come back and show you what it looks like when we get the finish on it. So we had a little bit of an issue. There was a, a one little spot here. See where that divot is right above that C? That uh, We didn't tape that off before we sanded it, and it came out that that was black. So here's what we did. We actually took a, a profile bit, and we kind of chipped out. Here, Ryan, can you show a little bit how you yeah. kind of chipped out any black that was down in there? And that obviously is a knot, so it's kind of a natural phenomenon, and that's what the, what it was. But um, and then uh, and then just kind of sanded it down smooth with some uh, I don't know. This is that's like, like two twenty or that's yeah. and maybe that's like five hundred or something. That's it's really, really fine. Really fine sandpaper, and then just sanded it by hand, and uh, and actually looks it looks really good. So just sanded it by hand, and uh, so now it just looks like kind of the natural knot but it doesn't have any black down in there. So that's a, that's how you would fix it if you forget to, um, uh, to mask it off and then you get black down in there. And this one, we wouldn't want to sand it anymore because it would just make those, those letters that much skinnier. Uh, those are one inch inset letters. So you wouldn't want to sand it with your belt sander anymore because it would really thin those letters down and make them look really skinny. So anyway, that's the way you kind of uh, kind of a fix on stuff like that. And I think that's just going to look like a natural knot uh, divot. Now, the other way you can do it, and some guys do this, is you can take some of the sawdust from your sanding, real fine sawdust, mix it with glue and stuff down in there and, um, and then let it dry and then sand it off. Ryan kind of likes it the way it looks here with a, kind of a natural knot uh, um formulation there so he's going to leave it the way it is but anyway it's coming out good so we'll get a finish on this thing and we'll come back and show you what it looks like so here is that bocce ball scoreboard that ryan finished up and i think it just came out terrific ryan just did a terrific job on this thing again i'm really uh uh, really pleased with the way that white came out. Um, it covered really well. Again, it's that white, Rust Oleum white primer. And uh, it was three light coats, but uh, covers really well. Traditionally, I haven't really liked white on inset letters or for background, but if I was going to, um, I like this stuff. Covered really, really well. So, anyway, great job, son. Uh, customer is going to absolutely love it and uh, just proud of all of the cool signs you're making. Anyway, everybody, have a great day. Bye-bye.